In our previous video, we looked at aggregation and deriving data from columns in a data frame. In this video, we'll continue on with aggregation, but we'll look at it from the point of view of grouping data. This is something you've seen in SQL Server, and it's something here we can do also with Pandas data frames. So to do that, I've actually gone back to an old example where we derive a data frame from a select query coming from SQL Server. Here's my connection string, here's my simple query, and then I'm running my read SQL command to generate this data frame that you see right here. And I've changed the grade from a letter grade to a number grade so that we have some numeric data to work with. Now, whenever you see data in a tabular structure where you get repeat values, like in this we see the ID repeats, the name repeats, these are the columns that are gems for performing groups, right? Wherever there's repetition, we can create a group and then get a, an, a reduce method or an aggregation method for that group. Like for, for Clifford Wall's group, what's the highest grade? What's the lowest grade? What's the mean, right? What's the total? All of these types of aggregations can be performed for each group. And then by performing the group, we get rid of the repeat rows to see that one aggregated value. Okay, so how do we do that? So let me see, my data frame is called grades df. And so we'll start this new cell here. And when we want to group, you call the group uh, group by method. All right, and then the group by method allows us to perform grouping on a single column, like for example, just the ID, or on multiple columns, which we'll see momentarily in this video. Okay, now if you just do this, you end up creating a group by object, right? F through this object, we can perform aggregation. Okay, so for example, if we take this group and we look at getting the max, all right, just overall. This is rather an interesting thing that happens. So now we get uh, a suppression of the duplicates so we can get the aggregation for that group. And when you do the max on the entire group, look what ends up happening. You actually get the max for this string column as well as the number column. Now, when we look at the data, this fizz211 is not the course for the highest grade, right? This isn't like SQL Server. So if we look at Clifford Wall, we look at that 90, it's actually not for the physics course, it's actually probably for a course in Chinese, right? So what's happening here? Of course, we'll see this flip if I look for the mean, as a, sorry, the min, then we'll get a different one where we get the lowest grade and this course, Chinese 11, zero, which actually ends up being usually the course for the highest grade. So what we end up seeing here at play is if you get the min or the max for the entire data frame, it will work on string columns as well as number columns. So what we're seeing here is actually alphabetically sorted. This string is the lowest and alphabetically sorted this string is the highest, right? Doesn't correspond to the grade. And of course, the grade would be a separate min and max calculation. So what do we do when we want to get the min or the max or the mean for one specific column? Well, what we can do is after we perform the grouping, but before we call the aggregation, we can put our square bracket notation here and refer to a specific column, like in this case, grade. All right, and now when we run this, notice that the output now is only the max grade or the min grade, et cetera, or we could get the mean grade, you know, the mean of all five or whatever, how many grades there are for each student. Now for our output, we might want this to be a little more descriptive, you know, rather than just seeing the person's ID, we can include the name because as we see the name does repeat along with the ID. So this is a meaningful way to group the data as well, meaning you can group by more than one column, just like in SQL Server, you can do the same. Uh, when we group by more than one column, in pandas, you know, then we just have to provide a list, right? So we're going to say group by ID, group by first name, and group by last name here. And now when we run this, 
we can see we get more meaningful output. We see the person's name and their ID with their, in this case, the average grade. Now what's interesting to note, when you look at the output, whenever you see the output like this, we can determine that this is not a pandas data frame. As we see, here's a pandas data frame. And this is actually a pandas series. It is a single column output. Here's our single column right here, this average grade. And here is our index. It's a combined index because we're grouping by combined fields. Okay, so we can keep it like this. This is a panda series, but if you wanted to generate a data frame, you would have to convert the series into a data frame. And so I'm going to make a new data frame and call this uh, average summary. And we can take this, call the pandas module and its data frame constructor, and then wrap that around our uh, calculation here and uh, run that. Of course, now we can see our average summary data frame here. We can see that that is a data frame. But again, notice this is still the index. The ID, the first and the last name are the index for that entire structure. It just We see this now is a single column pandas data frame. All right. Okay, so now we're getting to the point in the uh, demonstration where we can start to look at uh, problem solving with some novel uh, situation where we can work through some of these um, concepts into, uh, you know, a comprehensive problem. So we'll see you in the next few videos.